Welcome to the Wild Green World. I'm Heron Bray. Today I'm going to do a little introduction on the Asteraceae or the sunflower family. I am on the big island of Hawaii. I'm at Laakea Community. And here we have a permaculture farm full of all kinds of beautiful plants and flowers here. And one reason why I wanted to do a little intro on this is because it's a really easy family for beginners to learn how to recognize. A lot of people are impressed with this family because it's the largest plant family in the entire world, which means it has the most number of species. And it's all over the world. You can find members of this family on every continent which is pretty astronomical. Most families have a limited distribution where they're, or they've only concentrated in certain places. What that means is that this family was really successful evolutionarily in diversifying and making lots of different species that will grow almost anywhere in any situation. And they're, you can find them from little tiny herbaceous plants to shrubs to big trees to vines. So they come in all these different shapes. So we have a family that has 23,000 species in it. That's a lot of species. The Rasteraceae is also one of the most advanced plant families, evolutionarily speaking. And you can tell that because a lot of the parts get fused together and also things tend to get smaller and they also tend to get more complicated and advanced. And I wanna talk about how do you tell the Asteraceae family? What makes Asteraceae? So here we have a beautiful representative right here. You can tell it, that it looks kind of like a sunflower. And some people might think, oh, look at this beautiful flower, but they might be surprised to learn that this is not actually one flower. It's actually probably hundreds of little flowers all packed together in what we call a head. The simplest, easiest way to tell if a flower is in the Asteraceae or the sunflower family is to look at it and see, is there many flowers packed into a head? So many flowers packed into a head makes the Asteraceae. This inflorescence, this group of flowers actually has two different kinds of flowers in it. And the, in the middle, there's all these little tiny flowers and you can see the black part sticking up. That's the stamens coming out. And this, these flowers here, each one of these things that you might think was a petal is actually an entire flower. And it's actually an entire flower that has five petals in it, but they've all fused into one. On the outside, the really showy ones, these are called ray flowers because they're coming out like the rays of a sun. And then on the inside, all the little flowers that are all packed together, they're called disc flowers. So we have ray flowers and disc flowers. And all Asteraceae will either have only ray flowers, only disc flowers, or they'll have both. So in this case, we have both. This here is, uh, the plant is called yacone, and it's growing in our garden. We planted it here because we like to eat the roots. We have a big, beautiful underground part that's sweet and crisp and crunchy and juicy. A lot of people love to uh, dry it and use it as a sweetener. They make yacon syrup. So here's another member of the Asteraceae growing in our garden, but this one is a weed. This one, if you look closely at the flowers, we want to ask ourselves, are there ray flowers, disc flowers, or both? That's right. Only disc flowers. Uh, you can eat it raw in salads or you could probably steam it. I've never tried it, but it's, I think it's really good in salads. You shouldn't eat it every day, but every once in a while it's totally fine and delicious to eat. I wanted to show you something else really cool um, that's a common characteristic of the Asteraceae, although not all plants in the Asteraceae have this characteristic. Most of them do, and it's a good thing to be able to tell the family by. So you look at these little white poofs, just like dandelion fuzz. Probably many of you are used to blowing dandelions as a kid. 
this white fuzz is called pappus and it's attached to the seed or the fruit and the fruit is so tiny you might call it a seed but it's it really is a fruit and the pappus is one of those strange evolutionary parts that got reduced and changed into something else the pappus is modified sepals and pappus comes in all different shapes and sizes this is hair like pappus but sometimes it can be like bristles or scales or barbs. It can look so many different ways. <sighs> Another important feature uh, to identify the Asteraceae is to look on the backside of the flower head. And there you'll see these things that look green. They look like green sepals, but these are really bracts. And so we say that it has a whirl of involucral bracts and or an involucre. They are sometimes what trick people into thinking that this is one flower. So let's take a look at these involucral bracts. Here you see this is a that this green part right here is the whorl of involucral bracts and there's all the little disc flowers sticking up. And see how different they look from the yacone? They're thin and linear and they're all attached to each other and they make one row or one series. One of the most familiar plants you might not know is in the Asteraceae is lettuce. That's right. And this here is a representative of lettuce or the Lactuca genus. And we call it commonly Puna lettuce because that's where we are in Puna, Hawaii. Um, and it doesn't really look like the lettuce that you may be used to seeing in the grocery store, but here it is. And this, this plant is a little past its prime. You can see most of the uh, flower heads have gone to seed and they're they're finished with but we have one beautiful flower head left over here this flower head is a cool example of a flower head that's all ray flowers i wanted to show you how beautiful these involucral bracts are see how they're purple tipped and they're all overlapping they're like scales on a fish or shingles on a house also, check out that pappus on there. See how oh, that's coming apart. Oh, look, the seeds are blowing away in the wind. They're doing just exactly what they're designed to do. Another plant you're probably familiar with in the Asteraceae are artichokes. And you might not know it, but those juicy things that you chew on when you eat artichokes are actually the bracts. They're fleshy, inflated bracts, like you saw in the lettuce. Here's another member of the Asteraceae, the very rare Monachaea silver sword. And the silver swords are a genus that is endemic to Hawaii, and there's only a few species, and they only grow up here in these alpine environments on Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, and also there's some on Maui. Really beautiful plant, it grows very slowly, and it when it blooms, it puts out really tall spikes that are covered with little heads, Asteraceae heads. Thanks for joining me out here in the wild green world, and I hope to see you next time. <laughs>